And I just, I <sighs> broke. I yep. absolutely broke because I thought that was the one I was meant to get. Yep. That was the one I was meant to get. Welcome everybody to episode 62 of Watch Ross, the one where we're talking all about life. Here we are in the park. We thought we'd come and have a little kick about me and Petch before we recorded this episode of Watch Ross and before we record another exclusive podcast for premium members of actonlist.tv. If you are not a member of this website and you are an actor, what are you doing? You're doing yourself a massive disservice. Go and get your membership right now. So Petch bought a one pound football from Poundland. I decided that wasn't good enough for me. I needed to play with something much more expensive. So I decided to have a game of football. <laughs> It's ridiculous. With a four pound coconut latte from Costa Coffee. If you haven't seen that yet, here's a treat for you. Yes. <laughs> oh, fuck. That was my coffee. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I've got skills. What are you going to do about it? I've also got coffee all over my Converse and they're ruined. That's probably just cost me about 64 quid, that latte. But, folks, that's life. Which brings me on nicely to the topic for today's vlog and podcast. We're going to be joined by our special guest, actress Melissa Johns, who is a star, one of the stars of Mike Bartlett's upcoming BBC One drama, Life. Going to be coming out in like 2020. Um, incredible drama, all about life. Lots of different lives, different people's lives. Um, I don't know what I can tell you about it. Was it the read-through? It was incredible, but I'm going to leave that for Melissa to say what she can say about it right now. Things have just been shot or something's just gone off in the background. Kids with fireworks, probably. Carry on, Petch, it's fine. I met Melissa at something called the Disabled Artist Networking Community. Really interesting community that she set up with fellow actress and friend of hers, Cheryl Lee Houston, who plays Izzy in Coronation Street. It's a community that's been set up ultimately to champion diversity and inclusivity within the arts. I went to a meeting because I've got this dodgy eye condition. Melissa was there because she set it up, but she's also um, facing her own adversity. She was born with one arm. Real interesting adversity there. She certainly turned that into advantage though. It's not held her back. She's gone out and got what she wants from this industry. And I'm sure she's got, you know, a lot more to achieve in this industry as well. We're gonna be talking to her all about that, um, all about life. What else, Petch? All about BAFTA Elevate. She's been chosen to be one of the participants for BAFTA Elevate 2019. Um, ultimately, a, uh, another program set up by BAFTA to help champion diversity um, and underrepresented you know, niches within our industry. An incredible program. I want to know all about that, actually. Um, so I'm going to go back to the apartment now. Melissa's on her way. I'm going to throw my converse in the bin. Brilliant. And uh, yeah, enjoy this. We'll see you for a little chat afterwards. This is the Melissa Johns Podcast. <laughs> Melissa Johns, welcome to the Acts on This TV podcast. Welcome to my apartment. Welcome to the late night podcast. It's quarter past nine. I know. Tell people why we're recording so late. Well, I didn't realise that I wasn't finishing filming till eight. So I had a bit of a shock when it got to seven and I asked why we weren't rapping. And uh, I was told we weren't rapping till eight. We're not so. rapping till eight, but it's all very exciting. So you are currently, let's tell people what you're uh, what you're doing, what you're up to. You are filming Mike Bartlett's new BBC One drama. It's going to be out in 2020, I'm guessing. And it's called Life. It what is. What is it about? Obviously Life. I was at the read through. It's bloody brilliant, actually. But I'm going to let you tell people about it because I don't know what you are and what you're not allowed to say. Yeah, I mean, oh gosh, I don't know if I do. Um, so I play uh, a character called Hannah Taylor. Yep. Uh, in Mike Bartlett's new six-part BBC drama, Life. Uh, it's got an incredible cast. It's got the wonderful Alison Steadman, Peter Davison, uh, Victoria Hamilton, Adrian Lester. Uh, Adrian Lester's in it. Adrian, I didn't realise he was in it. He wasn't at the read-through, was he? Uh, I don't think he was. I don't think he was. No, mm. I don't remember. 
Um, great names. Drop drop a few more. Um, who else have we got? Uh, Rachel Sterling, uh, Maggie O'Neill, uh, Susanna Fielding. Yep, been on the um, podcast. She has. Amazing cast and um, I'm very thankful to be part of it. Um, my, the two actors that I work quite closely with, especially um, in the first few episodes, uh, are uh, Joshua James. He plays a character called Liam, um, who is my partner, and uh, a great actor called Kelvin Demba, who I had a one night stand Very with. Very naughty, Hannah Taylor. Nine months previous. One night stand, add a baby, wants to stay with your partner. Yeah. Try and bring the child up between the three of you. Yeah. How does that work it's out gonna, without giving the story it's away? It's going to go so well. Um, and it's modern and um do you know what the the lovely thing about this is hannah is she's really quite strong as a person and she just knows she wants it to work we're also going to talk about how we met okay mm -hmm. so we met via something called the disabled artist networking community um and i've got that right because when i say disabled actors it's not disabled artists yes networking community um otherwise known as dank interesting acronym it's a we, great one we kind of like love it now it's not bad we still love it well also you um, get really fed up of saying those four words over yeah. and over again so you just got to succumb to the word dank yeah but there is nothing dark and like minging about it because i think the word dank means like actually dark and, like, uh, it does i think in like shakespearean <laughs> language but all the cool kids now yeah. Dank is a word that is used amongst the cool kids. Who is it? As if it what for what? As if like that is dank. Oh, yeah, I mean I don't actually know. And I maybe it's actually something to do with like marijuana. But oh, right. um, oh, God. <laughs> I don't really know. Right, this is nothing to do with any <laughs> no, substances like that. It's about disabled artists getting their place in the industry. <laughs> Absolutely. So I was there because I've got dodgy eyes. You set it up with Shirley Houston. I was there because I've got a dodgy arm. You've got a dodgy arm. We're all well, a bit dodgy. We're, we're gonna talk about that tonight. Yeah, I mean like, you know what? Let's just throw it open, right? I think this is what we need more honest conversations about in, in society Absolutely. so that people stop being afraid to ask questions yeah. about people with differences so that they're not like pussyfooting around mm. and like that's what Dank kind of stands for. It's like let's actually have real open dialogue mm -hmm. where you're not afraid of offending anybody. Say what you want. Absolutely. You know, as long and as you're trying. more than anything, stay solution focused. Yeah, stop there moaning. Is, there is a time and a place to have a little moan about that audition that you didn't get and, you know, we all feel it. You feel crap after it. And there's a time and a place to go and sit and have a coffee or have a drink and talk about that. But when, you know, previously lots of schemes have been set up in the past, as you well know, yep. for disabled actors, um, lots and lots of schemes have been set up and they just haven't quite worked because, you know, what I think they haven't worked is, is because actually it's almost been set up as a place where everybody can just have a bit of a moan. Sometimes it's about lip service. Yeah. You know, people maybe think, oh, I'm doing the right thing by setting this scheme up. And quite often it is never ran by disabled artists. It's yep. never ran by the people who are actually going to benefit from this. So we thought we need to set up a networking community of disabled artists, not just actors. And the reason we did that is because we thought if disabled actors are going through this fight, so are disabled writers, directors, yep. musicians, uh, singers, uh, comedians. Um, so it's the disabled artist networking community. And we thought if we can create this community so strong in talent, we can get rid of that, that age old saying that we have heard so many times, oh, I really wanted to employ a disabled person or I really wanted to yeah, disable, yeah, yeah. A, a, a cast a disabled actor. I just didn't know where to find them. Yep. It's really hard for me to explain to people when they see me now um, because they're like, shit, you, you were so, of, you know, you, you're so open with it now. Yeah. But up until uh, 25, 26, I would have come into this room. I would have been wearing clothes that I would have thought about so that you didn't see it. I would have stayed on um, the correct side of you so that you would have never seen it. I would have thought about how I would sit. I actually thought, you know, because I always sit on this side, but there yeah. was a part of me that went, I know you're probably all right with this, but do you want to sit, sit there? Do you want to sit where you are on show without it? Yeah, yeah. So, but, and, and, and so I turned i was very very manipulative actually and i would learn to little tricks like uh i would always look at people in the eye and i'd be really animated with my face so that they to would draw never attention to the to face. always draw attention to my face and never look below my collarbone um we'd go on dates and if i wanted you know like food that was going to need to be cut up i would pretend i was going to the toilet and then i'd go to the kitchen and i'd say can you cut my meal up and do you know what the lads that i went on dates with this happened to so many dates that i went on um not I'm so say, many. Bloody days know, right? look, look at me acting like I've been on loads. Um, yeah, there's been a few. But and, and funnily enough, they would never look and be like, why is your steak cut up and mine's not? 
had a little iPhone hack. Oh, and, right, okay. uh, and and that's my that that was my 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 cherry on the cake when I was um Oh, was, was this hacked. some pictures? Yes. Ah, so you've mentioned this in the past, but then, but I don't know the, the the full ins and outs of it. But you, I guess, something leaked, and you just hit it head on and went right. I just hit it head on because I didn't have any other option really. Um, my agent called and said that a, a particular newspaper had called, and um, she was she's so wonderful. Um, my my agency, uh, Winterson's, and my agent's Nikki Winterson. We've been together, oh, gosh, seven years, and. Uh, she's just so fantastic and um the day it happened i i'd just come out of my first stint in coronation street yes yeah, so you play the character called imogen pasco was yeah. it in cory yes yeah. um and uh i was going into a quite a, a big meeting with Cheryl Lee actually oh, okay and i looked on my phone and i must have had about 20 missed calls and i thought oh off my agent I've got a thought, massive job this is a great job <laughs> bet spielberg's called <laughs> Um, and I, I said to Shez, actually, I said, oh, I'm not going to come in for a minute because I'm, I'm going to listen to this voicemail and see if I need to ring my agent back straight away. And the message just said, um, darling, don't answer the phone to anybody else. Ring me straight away. So I s stayed outside of the room and another mem another uh, co-founder stayed out with me. And I called and she said, are you sat down? And I said, uh, yes. And she said, um, I'm so sorry. Newspapers on the phone. Um, they have found leaked photos of you um, from an ex, oh and uh, and they're going to release the story. And at the end of 2015, I um, uh, got through quite well, down to the finals for a um, new regular in Hollyoaks. Yep. And I thought, oh God, this is it. This, this is, is it. This is the one. And it went on for months. And every day when my alarm went off to go in to the to the pay the bills job, you know, I was obviously so grateful that I had a job that, you know, did make me smile. Um, but every day I think this is going to be the one that gets me out. This yep. is going to be the one that gets me out. And then in March 2016, it had been going on for about six months now. In March 2016, my agent called and I answered and she said, I'm so sorry, darling. The <laughs> they have gone the other way. And she, she said it oh, so God. gently because she knew. And I just, I broke. Yep. I absolutely broke because I thought that was the one I was meant to get. Yep. That was the one I was meant to get. God, you know I, felt, what, Ross? I felt the same for four weeks ago in this, this big job in, in America. But it wasn't the job we wasn't were meant, the job to get. meant to get. It wasn't the job we were meant to get. And that's all we say to ourselves, isn't it? That was the one I was meant to have. Yep. And it wasn't because if it didn't happen, it wasn't. Boom. There you go, everybody. You have just seen three incredible clips of what was a mammoth. I say this every, every, every time, every vlog, because it was a mammoth podcast. That was an hour and 45 minutes. It's now, according to my kitchen clock, 23.07. And you've got to be up for filming life tomorrow at what? You on set for what? Six fifteen. Uh, yeah. So I will be getting. Oh no! I'll be get, be, getting picked up. Uh, my driver will get me at six fifteen. So I'm going to be up at like what five thirty. Might as well not go to bed. Um, listen, uh, there were some really, there were so many interesting things we spoke about there. Um, go get yourself a full, uh, like a premium membership on on this.tv. So you'll get access to the full hour and 45 minute chat, along with literally 200 hours worth of other podcasts with the biggest casting directors, agents, actors, writers, producers in this industry. Total no brainer. Um, go, go, go get your membership. But before that, I just want to expand on one point just for the vlog viewers that, that, you know, I want to go into a bit more depth on that we spoke about on the podcast. And that was, you said, listen, one thing that has really stood you in great stead for having success in this industry has been finding and embracing your differences. Okay. For you, it's having one arm, right? For me, it's having, <laughs> like that. For me, it's having dodgy eyes, right? Um, but it doesn't mean you have to have a disability, right? Don't get this twisted. A ca an actor said to me the other day, he said, listen, um, I've got into the acting industry a little bit late. I think he's in his 50s now. He said, before that, I worked for 30 years as a forensic pathologist or, you know, something to do with forensics in the police force. And I was like, wow, that's so interesting. Have you told any casting directors this? He's like, no. I'm like, mate, you are missing out on a massive USP there, unique selling point. Um, you need to be getting in touch with people like Daniel Edwards, Kate Rose James, who cast Line of Duty, Line of Duty Series 6, who's going again, I'm pretty sure. Um, because what a gift it is for you to walk on a set as a police officer in a police drama, authentically playing a police officer. You'll be able to advise everyone on the set about what's authentic and what isn't. It's just amazing. Just expand. How else can people find their differences and ultimately own them to create more opportunity? 
Um, yeah, I think you're you're absolutely right, Ross. You, it doesn't have to be anything to do with your body or disability or body difference. Um, it can be about uh, your upbringing. Um, you know, are you really, really working class? Are you not? Yeah. Have you actually had a really, really privileged upbringing, which has brought its own experiences? Um, what are the jobs you've done? You know, as you said, we've recently seen in the news that people are being kind of slaughtered for having a pay the bills job. Yeah. What were those pay the bills job? What, what are those jobs? Um, because they have given you experiences that you will bring to a character. Um, what about your culture? Um, I am half Romany gypsy. Um, and it's just about letting people know that, yes, as an actor, we're told constantly to be a plain canvas, right? Be, be a blank canvas so that you can be painted on. Absolutely. But do you know what? You've got to be painted with the right oils. And those oils need to be made up of all of those wonderful things. Where are your parents from? What kind of upbringing did you have? What kind of jobs have you, have, have you had in your life? Um, find what makes you different. Magnify it. Glorify it. And make it the best thing that you own. Because it's that that is going to make you different to the person that's next to you. Yeah, because what did that casting director say to you that you said in the in the Julia Crampsey, BBC casting director, casting like EastEnders, you know, in-house casting, really big casting director. She said to you when you left drama school, why have you not got that you've got one arm on your CV? And you said, oh, I didn't want to put it on because like people might not bring me in. And what did she say to you? She replied by saying, uh, there are tons of girls with blonde hair and blue eyes that have just graduated from drama school that are incredibly talented. And I can guarantee that none or not many of them will have one arm. So you need to show people what makes you different. Boom. I love it. Find what makes you different. What makes you different, Petch? I'm short. He's short. How old are you? I mean, how old are you? <laughs> He's not very old. He's only a little kid. What are you? Five what? Five five. Five five. Embrace it. Like, tell people about it. Stop running away from it and, like, you know, being... being... They don't take the mick out of you for it. I've never... Oh, whatever. Right, yeah, whatever. Uh, no, maybe. But, you know, you take the mick out of me falling over stuff. Guys, listen, find what's unique. Do you not know it? No, she knows me. Right, okay, she's forgotten the cats. I'll, I'll whisper at you in a second. She, we, we said, we said you, do you know the, you, can you remember one line yeah, yeah, for the end? Lines. Right, okay, well, I'll whisper it to you in a sec. Social media is up on screen right now. Please reach out. Let us know you have watched this vlog. Let us know what your biggest takeaway from the podcast was. Get over to actsonlist.tv. Get your membership. It'll be the biggest thing. Have you got it? Biggest thing you do. For, well, this is like the best thing you do for your career. Um, and we're going to be back next week with an incredible podcast with Ryan Clayton from Coronation Street. We've got Chris Hitchin, the star of Ken Loach's new film. Sorry we missed you. Coming on the week after that. Um, just don't miss it, you know. Be there or be unsuccessful you want to be. <laughs> be you be whatever makes you uniquely you um so thanks so much for watching um, melissa you know what time it is you know the catchphrase yeah i do until next week in three two one bye, bye for now, now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. It really would mean the world to me if you would leave a comment telling me what you enjoyed and what you would like to see more of next time. If you want to catch more episodes, head over to facebook.com forward slash watch Ross or youtube.com forward slash watch Ross. Make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on. I'll be back real soon. Bye for now. Going home. Oh, no. Oh no! Wasn't going to do that. I said that wasn't going to happen. I think I can get it. Yeah, I got skills. What are you going to do about it?